Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Sabine Verheyen. MEP Verheyen is a long-standing member of the European Parliament for the German Christian Democrats and is chairwoman of the Committee for Culture and Education since 2019. MEP Verheyen focuses notably on media policy, intellectual property, and digital agenda issues. In the past, she worked extensively on the telecom package. Okay, Sabine, you know about your challenge, telling us what, if anything, is wrong with the European Commission consultation on the future of telecoms and connectivity. So, Caroline, you know that um, the issue of fair share, or I prefer to say network fees, because it says clearer what we are talking about, has been simmering between the surface uh, for some time and has recently become more relevant. Uh, the European Commission is considering introducing an obligation for direct volume-based contributions from data-intensive online services to telecommunication companies. The Commission is planning a consultation in early 2023 and a possible questionnaire was recently leaked in Politico. So the cultural and creative sector are often not considered, even though they would be directly affected. And I think that is also one of the first mistakes because you have to listen to all sides and make a questionnaire, not just uh, one-sided uh, to the needs and uh, impact on the telecommunication sector. Mixed views we have in Parliament and Council, what I heard throughout uh, several talks, um, uh, there are parts uh, uh, in the in the parliament who are principally against network fees, also because we had the big discussions during the telecom package on uh, net neutrality. And uh, the question is how net neutrality can be seen with network fees on the other side uh, when it comes to the delivery of content of data um, via networks for special services, because in the end, uh, to be honest, uh, the consumer will pay for this because if you charge uh, streaming services with additional uh, fees, uh, it will be uh, on the one hand perhaps to the detriment of new production of content or uh, it has leads to higher costs for streaming services. So in the end, it's uh, in just a shifted income and we can also discuss about if uh, the, the uh, contracts and the, the payments for a network connection is high enough or not. How is the price structure? I think that would be a more transparent and fair discussion. Um, I know that also uh, from uh, the Dutch side, also from the Dutch uh, regulatory side, uh, there is an open uh, position that it's not needed to do so. And uh, uh, we have uh, big uh, uh, telco companies who have big advocates for network fees uh, in several European countries. Uh, we uh, had a, rep a presentation of a study by Wikonsult on the on this subject in the parliamentary event uh, we had just uh, a few weeks ago. And this study refutes the argument that there is insufficient money for expansion without network fees. They say there is enough money in the sector and it's a question on how it is invested and uh, not a question as if there is a lack of um, uh, investment or possibilities uh, because there is a lack of money. In this context, uh, unintended consequences for large parts of the cultural and creative sector cannot be ruled out. Uh, this additional burden would be, especially in light of the last crisis years, extraordinarily damaging for uh, large parts of the value in an industry whose digital business models are largely and increasingly based on internet-based sales channels. And um, uh, I know that uh, COVID had a huge impact in the production sector in the last years and if uh, the sector is also um, uh, impacted by these fees, it uh, will not lead to a more diverse and more uh, intensive and more quality content production uh, all over Europe. So it would also jeopardize the functioning market for online content distribution and significantly impact online consumers. So uh, to date, creative and cultural players and ISPs have a largely symbiotic relationship 
with many creative content providers investing in technological developments for improved network efficiency. It's not that streaming services uh, are just users of a large uh, uh, amount of, of, of data uh, transport, but they also work uh, together also with telco operators on uh, uh, higher efficiencies on how to reduce uh, the use of data and uh, the use of network capacity. So uh, there is also um, uh, also an investment by platforms in, in network, network development. The cultural and creative content has fueled the growth and development of the internet since the beginning. And uh, the demand for uh, high quality and high data uh, contracts is also because we have the content, the creative content that people want to see. So the demand is also driven by the content, uh, but uh, that also leads to better contracts and uh, 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 higher uh, consumer demands towards the telcos. So uh, these um, uh, 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 contracts that have a high uh, data um, uh, uh, delivery uh, is just there because the demand uh, for, for getting content is there. So if network fees were introduced, they would likely hamper creative content providers' ability to invest in content and network enhancement, disrupting this symbolic relationship, symbiotic relationship, sorry. And in addition, we risk decreased investments in content, which would also weaken us in international competitions. So... Um, I think it is important to say also very clearly network fees would also put net neutrality at risk, like I said already in the beginning. And uh, so I'm not in favor uh, to have network fees as an instrument for a better development of, net of network infrastructure, but really to take a look how we uh, can find um, uh, the right way. Uh, for example, when I take a look what is really hindering network uh, uh, development, it's also very often the administrative burden if you want to roll out new network uh, infrastructure or other things and I think there is a lot there are a lot of instruments where we can ease up the rollout of a better internet uh, but I think the network fees will not be uh, uh, the right solution because I think there is enough money in the market uh, but it must be used uh, in the best eff and efficient, uh, efficient way. Uh, thank you, MEP Verheyen. So I take away from, from uh, your intervention that if money is asked from um, video on demand suppliers, broadcasters, to a certain extent, because they're in the cloud also, uh, that money that they would have to pay uh, for network fees will either be a burden for their consumers by increasing the subscription fees, or will mean uh, less money going into the production of content and a decrease in quality, which obviously is not what Europe is looking for. We're, we're proud of our cultural sector and we're proud of the content that is created uh, in Europe. And also the fact that, um, as you mentioned, the Netherlands pointed out to the government of the Netherlands that there is no need and the, for uh, a network fee, but also Beric actually issued a statement saying nothing has changed uh, since the past, so no changes are required at a regulatory level. Uh, I, I, I regret with you that indeed the consultation is very um, technical and obviously very um, much uh, oriented towards telecom operators and infrastructure providers and the platforms. Uh, I still encourage a lot of uh, members of the creative sector to respond to the consultation because I think it's important for their, their voice to be heard as, as is, it is important for consumers to be heard, I think, in this debate. And finally, yes, network neutrality is a concern, I think, by everyone. You participated in creating the open internet uh, measures that apply to Europe. Let's hope that uh, they continue applying in the future. Thank you so much for your time.